What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Yoon. You're watching the TF Movie Show. This is just a web series. We're talking about the Transformers live-action movie franchise. This is episode number 48. And in this episode, got a pretty big update for you guys. Now, this is an update that I'm kind of surprised to read about. But at the same time, I'm also not surprised given the current circumstances with global pandemic and all. This one's not that surprising. So let's just talk about it. So this is from Deadline. I'm going to read you the headline. Animated Transformers prequel activated. Toy Story 4's Josh Cooley to direct for Hasbro slash E1 and Paramount. A Transformers animated feature length film is actually happening. This is official. This is official. It's actually happening. Now, this is a bit surprising to me because... I really thought that this wasn't happening because there was that um, Transformers animated prequel happening at Netflix. And I just felt that, you know, Hasbro perhaps decided that maybe this animated feature length film is a little bit more expensive to make. So therefore, let's just go to the Netflix route and just go from there. And then we can start selling toys that way, which they've been doing. They've already been selling the, the, the War for Cybertron uh, Netflix animated series. Um, and those, are, those toys are already on shelves right now. I've been seeing people's um, toy hauls, Transformers hauls, and people have been buying them up. And that's the whole idea, to sell toys. So Netflix have, has already got that going on. We haven't seen the final product yet. It's coming soon. Uh, but I thought that was the Transformers animated prequel and that was it. Looks like we are getting that feature length version that was discussed a long time ago. And by a long time ago, I'm talking about during the, the days of the writer's room. The writer's room, there was an announcement that it was disbanded and that's a normal thing. Once the writer's room is complete after that, uh, you know, the, the two or three months where they're in that room, they disband. And that just means that uh, they're done talking about it. They've talked about all the different story ideas and there's nothing more they need to do from that point on until the studios decide that, okay, let's bring these ideas to fruition and then we'll go from there. Looks like that's actually, actually happening. Now, back in 2015, um, the, the Ant-Man writers, uh, Andrew uh, Barr and Gabriel Ferrari, the Andrew, yeah, Andrew Barr and Gabriel Ferrari, uh, uh, let me, let me, let me just, uh, yeah, Andrew Barr and Gabriel Ferrari, they were the scribes to write, uh, the Transformers animated prequel. And that was part of the whole uh, writer's room. And therefore their story, their script was supposed to be connected with everything else. So th they kind of mapped out this larger story. And this is one of those stories within a larger timeline. Well, Here's the thing about this, this story that's going to be um, directed by uh, Toy Story 4 uh, director Josh Cooley. This one may or may not be connected with Bumblebee. Or uh, it may or may not be connected with uh, the other two films that are happening from Paramount and Hasbro. And that is the Bumblebee sequel and also the Beast Wars film. Which are also still in the early stages of development. I'm talking about script stages. They can't really go any further beyond that just because of, you know, the global pandemic. But I had a feeling that, or rather I have a feeling at, upon reading this article that Hasbro CEO, Brian Goldner, stated that, okay, look, um, this is happening. There's a global pandemic. We're not going to be able to shoot this film and thus release this film and so that we can sell toys, therefore, we got to go about a new direction. We're already selling the Netflix series, a War for Cybertron toys. We got to get a new series out there. And there's nothing really right now except that was shown from, uh, uh, um, I think, uh, Toy Fair and the Studio Series. They got to do much more than that. And what can be done during a global pandemic? Well, people can work remotely. Scripts can be written. Um, uh, uh, Pre-production can be done remotely by Zoom or uh, or um, uh, 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 Skype conferences, conferencing call, right? So what they've done already is they've hired the director for Toy Story 4, Josh Cooley. And it looks like they're going to work off of Andrew Barr and Gabriel Ferrari's animated Cybertron prequel script, but he's also putting the finishing touches on them. So perhaps he's going to rework we rework it a little bit so that it feels more like 
a, a standalone film or a film that won't have too much to do with any of the other films. I mean, you personally can, uh, can view it or, or perceive it as being connected with Bumblebee or Bumblebee 2 or whatever. But actually, I think what they're going to do is that they're just going to make it a standalone film. As in, it's just, it works well on its own. It doesn't really necessarily need to be connected with anything else. It just works well on its own. So let me just read you what it says. Hasbro Entertainment's E1, Hasbro Entertainment Studio E1 and Paramount have quietly hired Josh Cooley, fresh off winning a Best Animated Film Oscar for Toy Story 4, to direct a big scale Transformers theatrical prequel that sources said focuses on an origin story. This t it takes place on Cybertron, the planet from which the good guy and bad guy robots come from. The film revolves around the relationship between Optimus Prime and Megatron. Now that is pretty exciting. I'm very interested in the brothers, you know, Optimus Prime and Megatron and what they're going to do with that. This is a brand new direction that they're going in. And I think at this point on, this is a full on reboot. I mean, a lot of people have been talking about, is this a reboot? Is it a prequel and all that? I think you guys have your answer right now. From this point on, this is all a reboot. This is a brand new direction. Forget Unicron or Quintessa and all that. Forget everything that has happened in the last, um, since 2007 to the five films, Transformers the Last Night. Forget about all that. That was the, the Michael Bay era of Transformers films. Now we're, they're doing something different. And I think that after, how long did it take? 2007 to 2017. I think it took 10 years for them to really figure out uh, what they should do. And I'm glad they took that time because, you know, we've seen the Bay era of Transformers films. Now it's time to see something different. And it looks like they might be veering towards the direction of truly, truly pe uh, pleasing the original fans, G1 fans, and kind of just opening the doors to not just G1, uh, not just pleasing G1 fans, but opening doors to uh, all fans alike. So I'm really pleased by this direction they're going in. Like I said, I really didn't see this coming by having an animated uh, prequel. But the fact is that Hasbro's got to sell Transformers toys. They got to do a new toy line. And they know that fans are really hungry for a brand new film. Which, you know, it's very difficult for them to give us any information on. Because the fact is that global pandemic has caused uncertainty in the entire industry. So they can't put a release date. They can't put a... A, a um, even a release date on when these new toys are going to come out. But with them now hiring a uh, the Toy Story 4 director, they have a general timeline as to when production will really take place, when they're going to release the marketing for it, and when they can release marketing for those toys and when the toys will actually be released. So that is something that, you know, this, this is all part of business. This is all part of uh, merchandising. So they really need to get their big feature length commercial out there for these new toys. Now what I'm curious about is not just the story, but the designs. How are these going to be different from uh, what we saw in the first three minutes of Bumblebee? And how are these going to be different from the Netflix animated prequel? Uh, animated Cybertron story. I I'm really, really curious about that. Uh, like, how will the story be different from Netflix story? And how will the designs be different from what we saw in the first three minutes of Bumblebee? That's going to be very, very interesting. But I like the idea that this can work as a standalone film, a true origins for the Transformers and exploring the relationship between uh, Optimus Prime and Megatron. Not so much the focus on Bumblebee. This will be the very first time where the movie doesn't focus on Bumblebee, right? We've been getting so much focus on Bumblebee. I think that they're really listening to the fans and really seeing that um, uh, there is more potential beyond just Bumblebee and um, and Bumblebee, you know what I'm saying? Bumblebee and a human and all that stuff. So now the focus is on Optimus Prime and Megatron. And I think that's very, very important. I think that is actually a huge, huge nod to the fans to really give us that. So I'm glad they're going in that direction. Now, I'm just going to read you the final uh, paragraph from this article. The film is separate and apart from the live action Transformers film series and the Bumblebee spinoff. And those movies continue on a fast track. But as studios take stock of restarting production, it is becoming clear that making a big scale animated feature is easier than a live action tentpole because so much of the work can be done while respecting social distancing. That is an issue in the acceleration of the Transformers animated film. Cooley is overseeing a final draft with the writers now. 
All right. So it will still be produced by Lorenzo de Verona Ventura and Mark Bradian uh, and Hasbro and E1. So, but this is a, this looks like something that it really does feel like it's going to be something that's completely separate. So I think people should take it as that and not try to connect it with the, with the, um, the Bumblebee films. Uh, there really isn't a need to do that. This is the story that people have been waiting for. And this one will really, really, um, I think it will truly respect the, the source material. So I'm really excited. So there you have it. What do you guys think of that? I'm really curious as to how you guys feel about it now, considering they're changing directions. They're switching gears. I mean, originally it was just Bumblebee 2 with Optimus Prime and then a Beast Wars film. And the, the one that comes out with the better script first will be the one that's going to be fast tracks to production first. Now it looks like that while that is still happening, the probability of the, 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 um, the animated prequel happening first is highly likely. You know what I'm saying? So, Hey, we are getting something. We are getting something. Heck, the Bumblebee uh, uh, sequel and the Beast Wars film don't even have a director. This one has a director because they already have a script. They're just touching it up. And then not only that, Toy Story 4 director Josh Cooley, you know, he's an Oscar-winning director for an animated film. Why not get one of the best uh, um, uh, animating animated film directors, award-winning animated film directors, work on a Transformers uh, animated feature length, uh, film. I think we're going to have a, I think we're going to have a pretty good product in the end. So there you have it. Anyways, I want to know your thoughts about that. Let me know in the comments section below. And also I just want to tell you guys, Hey, stay tuned for my next episode, uh, the Raging Nation toy show. I, I believe we're at episode number 40. Yeah. 49. I'm actually going to, um, have an episode talking about, um, going back in time when I was a kid and talking about the very first Transformers toys and other robot toys that I had when I was a kid. So uh, it's going to be very, very nostalgic. Make sure you stay tuned for that episode. That one's coming up next, so be sure to watch that and you get a little bit of a history lesson of what I had uh, as, a, as, a, as a fan of uh, Transformers and Robots when I was a kid, all right? Anyways, that's all I got to say in this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to have more updates later on. As always, if you enjoyed it, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Rage Nation. Also follow me on Twitter, Rage Nation. My name is Oxy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.